Shalom, this is the brother Azana Moth. Back at you with another lesson. I pray this lesson is edifying to the lambs, to the sheep. All right, of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakaha Kadash. And double honor to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone who do it well. Shalom, my brothers, Shalom. Now I want to get straight to the point on Zechariah chapter 3, the coming branch. Okay, and this is a vision that St. Zechariah had of Joshua the high priest. Now Joshua was a high priest in the medial Persian Empire. He was a powerful leader that led the children of Israel, okay, through the wilderness because Moses went to the spirit world. So in this vision, okay, that we're going to go through, that Zechariah had, he was in the presence of the Most High. Okay, proceeding to the promise that Yahweh Shai will give to Israel. As Yahweh Shai says, he is jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion a great zeal. Okay, and this is a beautiful chapter through the Spirit. And you can start in the beginning, Zechariah, all right, three and one, but we're gonna start at the seventh verse, all right, getting straight to the point. This is Zechariah three and seven. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. All right, so basically, if you keep the commandments and walk in all the most high's ways, okay, which the high priest Joshua did because he was a faithful servant. All right, well, now you got to envision, okay, in these times, this is us. This is us in this position, being that we're priests to the Lord, okay, after the order of Melchizedek. So if you do these things, keeping his laws, statute, commandments, you know, brothers that are able to teach, go on the highways and byways, having faith, all right, brotherly love. It says, you shall keep his charge, judge his house, and also keep his courts. Which basically goes into you managing the house. What house? The house of the Lord. Okay? Which is a what? Which is a steward of God. All right, let's go to the blue letter. And managing this house. All right, you're being a steward of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's in Titus 1 and 7. Okay, what does it say? It says, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward. All right, now in the blue letter, when you look this up, all right, it says a house distributor, i.e. a manager or an overseer. Okay, a preacher of the gospel, chamberlain, governor. So we're going to govern all right, the Lord's house. Being that Yahweh Shai left the business to us right here on earth to continue in his absence. All right, doing his work. You see? Now let's get Acts 6 and 3. It says, Wherefore, the brethren, look ye out among seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. You see? So the Lord's given us charge right now to appoint over this business in this world. But look what he's going to do when we get to the heavenly places. All right. He's going to exalt us. Just like the angel stood by and put clean garments on Joshua. When you go into this chapter. All right. You can see that Joshua had filthy garments on him at one time. And Satan tried to charge him. But the angel stood by and put clean garments on him. You see. And that's what's happening now. In these times, the angels are putting clean garments on us, all right, renewing our minds with this gospel, with this truth. You see, right? Let's get another precept in Luke, the 22nd chapter, being that we continue with the Lord in this regeneration, all right? This is Luke 22 and 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father appointed unto me. 
So with these clean garments that we're putting on, we're putting on for the elect. Okay? Right? It says that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on throne, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? And we always go into why we're in this thing. You were called into this, but many were called and few were chosen. Right? So the question that St. Peter had when he said we have forsaken everything, what will we get? Yahweh Ba Shimei Hawashai. What will we get? We gave up our families, jobs, right? Kids. We gave up on our wives. What are we going to get, all right, for giving all this up and following you? That's what Peter asked Yahweh Shai. Well, you just heard the answer, right? We're going to eat and drink at the Lord's table. He's going to appoint to us a kingdom and govern the new world. Just like Joshua, the son of Nun, who was an honorable man. Okay? Peter, Paul, Matthew, Luke, John. All right? Men like Esdras. Men of the Lord. Follow the Lord. Okay? And they're going to be rewarded when Yahweh Shai takes the crowns from this kingdom and is glorified as the Alpha and Omega. Okay? That time is approaching. Because the Lord said what? He said... He said the days will be shortened for the elect's sake. And we see what's going on out here. All right, the wars and the rumors of wars. So Yahweh Shai is going to be glorified as the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings. But we're going to be kings, all right, and joint heirs and just like God. Okay? This is Matthew 19 and uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to about verse 28. It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the reward. That's the reward when the coming branch comes. Okay? And we being branches of the righteous vine, Yahweh Shai. Right? Let's continue in this vision. All right, Zechariah 3. It says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. Okay, again, Yahweh Shai is the branch. Okay, being the first fruit of his father, Yahweh the creator. And we are his branches. Okay? The branches of Yahweh Shai. When you go into Genesis 1 and 1, you can read about the Alahayim. Okay? Right? So Yahweh Shai was that first fruit that we're waiting for to come and exalt us, to take us up in them chariots. All right? In a safe place. Let's get that uh, first fruit. This is Romans 11 and 16. For if the first fruit be holy, okay? The lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? Right? And Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai is the root of this thing. But we are the branches. All right? And we read that that's a wondrous sign. Okay? The elect. That's who the Lord delights in. He doesn't delight in the two thirds, He delights in His elect. Kind of like this man that's sitting, okay, being set apart and shining. That's the spirit in him. Okay? Right? This is um, Isaiah 8 and 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are the signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. See, those wondrous signs is the Lord's elect. So this is a beautiful, all right, vision that Zechariah had where he's seeing a time of peace. All right. So I got a precept in Isaiah 11, all right, dealing with the rod and the stem of Jesse. 
all right? That branch, which is Yahweh Shai. This is Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And when we read this, this is why anybody just can't be grafted in, all right? It's a righteous vine and its roots, not just any other plant, not just any other thing. No, it's an organic plant, okay, right? That has an organic branches, nothing GMO modified, all right? No other nations, you see? So Yahweh Shai came forth of the rod of Jesse, okay? He is the vine. What's that in John uh, John 15, right? Yahweh Shai is the vine. Let's get that. This is John 15 and uh, 4 and 5. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Yeah, he is the vine. Okay, the true vine. And his branches is the body. And that true vine is where the builders rejected. And in this parable, we're going to read about the seven spirits. This vision was heavy. All right, Zechariah 3 and 9. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone shall have seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. I will remove the inequity of that land in one day. So Yahweh shy is the stone that the builders rejected. But he died for the sins of the nation of Israel. Okay, taking away our inequities in the time of his coming. Right? We are purchased through his blood. All right, let me grab a precept because this is how we get understanding through the precepts, right? Let's go to Jeremiah 50, right? Let's see. Uh, this is Jeremiah 50, I believe, verse 20. Khan. Jeremiah 50 and 20. And in that time, saith the Lord, the inequity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none in the sense of Judah. They shall be not found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. You see, Yahweh Shai is going to wash away our sins through the power of the Most High. All right, his father. All right, who was the chief of the branches. Okay, so the Lord's going to pardon our sins. He said, sin no more, sin less, right? But we're still in this flesh. This is why he's going to take away and purge away our sins. Because it's written in Isaiah 45 and 17, all Israel shall be saved. But he's coming for the elect this time, right? Romans 11 and 26. Let me grab that. Okay, this is Romans 11 and 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He's going to take away our sins. Okay, next verse. For this is my covenant unto them, while I shall take away their sins. And this is why when he prayed to his father in the garden, okay, three times when he asked Peter to watch him, Yahweh ignored him because he had to go through this walk. He had to die for the sins of Israel, okay? And the seven stones go into the seven spirits of the Most High. Because it said in Zechariah 3 and 9, he had laid before Joshua upon the stone and there shall be seven eyes. Okay, right? Hey, we're speaking of the spirits of the Most High. That's in Revelation, the fifth chapter. All right, proceeding to the sixth verse. It says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth 
into all the earth. You see, right? The seven horns and the seven eyes represent the seven spirits that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai sent forth unto the earth, right? And that's what Revelation, uh, the fourth chapter, corresponds with. Okay, when you read that. This is why it says, blessed is the man that readeth. Because this Bible is a mystery. You see? Right? Revelation 4 and 5. Check this out. It says, and out of the throne proceeding lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Right, the seven spirits. Okay? seven lampstands all right to the seven stars seven golden candlesticks right and the spirits of the seven churches represent the elect all right seven is a number that can mean a large amount and see this is the mysteries that the lord said he would manifest to us through his doctrine that was hid for so long but now it's open through the spirit Right? Hey, that's actually a verse. Let me get it. Hold on. That's a verse. All right? Let's get that before I finish the parable. Right? This is uh, Colossians 1 and 26. It says, Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made a fest to his saints. Okay? So this mystery has been manifest to us, and now the gospel is open. So let's finish this off with the seven stars and the seven golden candlesticks before we move on to Zechariah 3 and 10. All right, this is Revelation 1 and 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. All right, now the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Okay, and the seven golden candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And these are representatives of camps. Okay? The men of the Lord. Right? This is what this interpretation is going into. And when you do a Revelation 5, all right, the precepts of Zechariah, all right, the third chapter. Okay? Let's continue. This is Zechariah 3 and 10. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, Shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree? What does that mean? What does that mean? That means it's going to be peace. That means that the Lord is going to subdue all the nations. And finally, Jacob is going to rule. All right. A time of peace, a time of sovereignty. All right. Let's go into the vine and the fig tree. Okay. Let's elaborate on this. This is Micah 4 and 4. It says, But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. It says, None shall make them afraid, because we're going to be at peace at this time. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. All right? So this is the time that Yahweh Shai is going to get his glory. All right, again, and all nations shall be subdued under him. No one will speak of other gods because the name of Yahweh Shai will be the biggest name in the world. Okay? Right? Micah 4 and 5. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God and we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. So everyone is going to know the name of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. Every man under his vine and fig tree. See? So this is a time of salvation. That's what salvation is going into. A time of sovereignty. Peace. Not just 40 years of peace. Right? Like under King David and King Solomon. When they ruled. We're talking about eternal peace. Right? When we go into the book of, uh, what's that? Maccabees, the first chapter. A hey, Simon had peace in Judea when he was in power. Okay, his men, they were set up in powerful positions. 
And the same thing is going to happen to us, brothers. All right, remember King David and Solomon, they put their men in regal positions. So I want to grab that quick account when Simon was in power. All of this matches up to us when we're going to be in rulership. We got to imagine these things, right? This is uh, 1 Maccabees 14 and 8. It says, Then did they till the ground in peace, and the earth gave her increase, and the trees of the field their fruit. Right? That has a double meaning right there. Because we know that trees are likened to men. So the earth will increase when the men of the Lord are in power. Right? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right? It also is going into the earth being happy again. The earth being replenished. All right? Under the hand of the righteous ones. You see? Right? Maccabees 14 and 9. The ancient men sat all in the streets, communion together of good things. And the young men put on glorious and warlike apparel. Brothers, this is going to happen again when New Jerusalem is established. Hey, you Aquaf of the one third, you're going to be all right too. Zachariah saw all of this. Okay? Men and women and children will be in the streets rejoicing. Right? Getting along and having a good old time. Right? Look at this precept. Let's get this. Zechariah had the spirit on him. All right, let's go to the eighth chapter. This is Zechariah 8 and 3. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of the host of the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. See what we just read in Maccabees 14. We're reading it again in Zechariah 8, but it's a different time because at this time, this is the kingdom of heaven. Zechariah 8 and 5. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. You see, so there's nothing new under the sun. All right, nothing new under the sun. This time, it's going to be eternal. Not just a short period in the time of the Maccabees under the Hasmonean dynasty. No, it's going to be an eternal peace. You see? Let's finish this off, and then I'll close. This is 1 Maccabees 14 and 10. It says, He provided victuals for the cities and sat them all manner in mutation, so that his honorable name was renowned until the end of the world. Yeah, how a shy's name is going to be known. It's going to be known. All right, the elect are going to be known. Like how Michael Jackson was in the 80s. All right, women in stretchers passing out. All right, that's a bad example that I can use. Because we're going to be much more powerful, much more popular. All right, the elect are going to be balling. See? So Simon, he set up all his men. King David set up all his men. Solomon. And the same thing is going to happen to the elect being joint heirs. All right? So we won't be wearing war like a pearl in the kingdom because of the peace that we're going to maintain. All right, 1 Maccabees 14 and 11. He made peace in the land, and Israel rejoiced with great joy. For every man sat under his vine and his fig tree, and there was none to fray him. There was none to fray him. There is no enemy that's going to be over us anymore at this time. So this vision that Zechariah saw, hey, it pleased him, Right? He saw the right hand of Yahweh, and he saw Israel in its glorified state. And through the Spirit, this is what we're waiting for, we're yearning for. 
All right, so that's the vision that Zechariah had. All right, and I hope this lesson has been edifying to the elect of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakaha Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. This is the brother Azad Amar. On to the next Shalom.